Sling. Dead. Sling. Dead. Sling. Dead. The Death Slingers are forced to be reckoned with. They use massive weapons requiring an abundance of strength as their weapons of choice. But they don't use them as melee weapons. No, they throw them at their enemies. Why does the Death Slinger do such a ridiculous thing? Well, the Death Slinger is a professional, one might say. A professional in throwing big spears, weapons, unorthodox things to annihilate their enemies from a distance. A large distance, but also a medium priced distance, and also a short distance. The Death Slinger is everywhere. You can't escape this monster, and you can't trick the Death Slinger into making them lose their advantage by standing very close to them. But if the Death Slinger throws his weapons away every time, isn't it then a tedious way of fighting if you accordingly have to pick up your weapons every time, is what I hear the naysayers say. Ain't no way our generation with no attention span whatsoever has the patience to indulge in that kind of fatigue inducing idiosyncratic behavior that one can only classify as sociopathic. But the Death Slinger has come a long way, with years of practicing in the ways of magic to ritually bind their weapons to them so the weapon always magically returns to them after they throw said weapons. Thus, the Death Slinger has the ability to go on an infinite spree of throwing their weapon while staying in the exact same position. This has caused a worldwide phenomenon of people being killed mysteriously by big weapons being thrown in their face from an unknown source. But on a serious note, if you want to trivialize honor mode like your life depends on it or if you were offered 4.26 million dollars by a drug lord. For for successfully clearing honor mode, this is your build and calling. The Death Slinger is so simple to play, but so insanely lethal, making it an absolute S plus tier pick. And when I say simple, I mean it. Even if you have an IQ that can be counted on one hand, you will succeed with this build. How it works is then as following. We will make use of the Barbarian's Berserker subclass to unlock Frenzy, which gives us those enraged throws at level 3, and we go to level 5 with the Barbarian to get that extra attack, so more throws. We will get a lot of strength, so enraged throws are the hardest hitting throws of weapons basically, as they deal extra damage compared to normal throws when you spec into strength, and we will get a lot of strength with this build. And they completely smash our enemies face deep into the ground while doing so, the latter being obviously a manifestation of applying the prone status effect on our enemies guaranteed. And prone is one of the best crowd control effects in the game basically, but more on that later on in this video. Now, if honor mode is consuming all your time and you have no time to stress thinking about what you're going to cook tonight or whether your resolution is to save money or eat better, HelloFresh is here to help you do all three. Thanks to HelloFresh, America's number one meal kit for sponsoring today's video. With HelloFresh, you will have your most delicious year yet with fresh ingredients and chef-crafted recipes at a price you will like, delivered right to your door. HelloFresh now also has more options than ever to support your wellness journey. Dig into their huge catalog with over 45 different dinner options and even more market items that suit any healthy lifestyle. They also say breakfast is the most important meal of the day and HelloFresh agrees. In fact, they're giving all subscribers free breakfast for life. That means you'll enjoy a totally free breakfast item with every single HelloFresh delivery. Now, what I personally like the most about HelloFresh is their variety in recipes. They have pretty much everything and a lot of unique recipes. You will never get bored trying out their tasty meals. So check them out. Click the link in the description or use my code and get free breakfast for life. One breakfast item per box while your subscription is active. These hard-hitting CC having enrage throws are on a bonus action, so we immediately after 5 levels in Barbarian grab 3 levels of Thief via Rogue to get fast hands for an extra bonus action, meaning extra enrage throws. Then finally we also grab 3 levels of Eldritch Knight to unlock the property to magically bind our weapons so they actually return to us after throwing them. And the road to becoming an Eldritch Knight is ridden with greatness as we get very useful spells and fighter properties like the beloved Action Surge which is going to give us even more throws in a single turn as well. But wait, that is only 11 levels. Where does level 12 go? Which class do we spend the final level slot on? Well, that is a bigger mystery than the Loch Ness Monster and will never be revealed. I'm just kidding. It will be revealed later on in the video as it doesn't make sense yet without the proper context. Let's quickly explain how the build works in action then. You frenzy at the start of the fight to unlock your enraged throws. You accordingly use your bonus action for set enraged throws and your actions for normal throws to completely annihilate your enemies. Before action search and any other potential extra action or bonus action giving stuff, we already have 4 throws for all turns after frenzying. Then we can still use action search for another 2 throws to kill off any remaining targets as you see, giving you great damage output in a single turn. Now we obviously will optimize our build so each individual throw will deal great damage as well and with up to 6 throws just from our multi-class distribution we will annihilate everything already. 
Just look at this, we're one-shotting enemies with over a hundred HP. One throw and they are a goner. Our damage output is going to be absolutely insane with this build. No one is safe. Even the main enemy bosses in the game on the highest difficulty, we can solo them with this build. The remainder of any party you put this build in will observe your thrower in pure anguish and ask themselves, why did they not become an expert in throwing weapons themselves? Now, I censored the name of this boss just for the people that don't like spoilers or just got the game, but this is one of the main bosses of the game and he has over 350 HP whopping numbers of HP, but our thrower completely trivializes him solo on the highest difficulty mode with amazing heart hitting attacks and oh, look at all those crits, that is another thing we will have with this build, a lot of juicy critical hits because I made sure to include that as well to make our damage output nuclear. Enough talking, level time. Level 1 Barbarian, race or companion doesn't matter whatever you like. If I need to say something, Wood Elf or Wood Half Elf are great options for the movement, but Dwarf is really good too, as you can use Dwarf and Thrower and all Dwarf subclasses are going to be great for this build. Dwarf and Thrower is a very good alternative weapon to throw, so definitely something going there to pick a Dwarf. Ability is get 17 strength as it fuels all our damage, 16 dexterity for the initiative, we want to have our turn as fast as possible, 14 constitution for extra HP and sustain and 10 wisdom since wisdom saving throws are still important so we don't dump it fully unlike intelligence and charisma. Level 2, nothing to choose here but you get reckless attack. Early on can be very good to guarantee hits as it gives you advantage on your hits so utilize that whenever needed. Oh already level 3, here we get berserker to unlock those amazing enraged throws that I already talked about. This is a huge moment for you. Invite everyone you know to your house, hold a big party and celebrate for a few days, make questionable decisions and after that return to Baldur's Gate 3 because level 3 is the starting point of the end for your enemies. And yes, it starts at early because accordingly at level 4 we get Tavern Brawler, the most OP feat in the game. Well, if you're playing certain builds, if you are a nerdy wizard and yeah, it doesn't do much for you. Tavern Brawler makes our accuracy and damage spiral out of control and at level 5 we obtain an extra attack and extra movement. It's just goodness after goodness and we don't even have to make any real choices while leveling. It is done automatically for us. It's like we have won the lottery with this build, why do I even have to make this guide? Well, let's start making some decisions because the thrower build isn't just good thanks to what you get leveling wise. No, 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 no. It becomes amazing due to all the juicy gear you can obtain very early on as well. So we're dumping the leveling interface for a second and we're going to swap over to our early game gear segment. The Ring of Flinging, a ring you can get within 2 seconds of a new playthrough and it's best in slot for your entire playthrough. Yes, that's the level of being powerful early on that we're talking about here. Talk to Eren, the trader in the Druid Grove, get the ring, it is extra damage to all our throws and do I need to say more? Equip it around your finger tighter than a nun's as the British would say because it's never ever going off again. Amazingness continues however because the returning pike is obtainable in Act 1 very early on as well and this is your early thrower weapon because just read what it does, it returns you after you throw it. This weapon is ahead of its time, no need to be an Eldritch Knight when the maker of this weapon has already found the technology to make the weapon return to you automatically without any magic. It is also a plus one weapon by the way and it scales with strength so amazing damage with our tavern brawler right from the get go and fits our build perfectly. You get it from the trader in the goblin camp. The weapon and the ring are the two biggest pickups very very early on I would say but the haste helm is also a very good obtainable helmet at the start pretty much. Gives us extra movement basically and movement is very good for this build. Do you have an annoying situation where you need a better position to throw from to actually be able to hit or reach your target? Well, extra movement gives us exactly that leniency and more flexibility in exactly those scenarios. The haste helmet is really good for that purpose and it's obtainable in the Blighted Village, right here. Third or more, while we are busy, get the bow of awareness in the goblin camp as well, right here from Roba. This gives us extra initiative, which is a very welcome bonus. With how powerful this build early on really is, you really want to be the first or as fast as possible to have your turn. And that's all I have to say really, it is also why we spec heavily into dexterity. Since we then also have medium armor proficiency as a barbarian, make sure to get the best medium armor you can find from the traders, it helps out with our survivability. Finally, a bit later on when you get to the underdark, so still early on, but not as early as the early, 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 early obtainable items, get the caustic band. On honor mode, it costs a bit, so farm for it like your life depends on it because it's going to be on for your entire playthrough as well. Caustic Band is just extra damage, that's all it is really, but as we will get more and more throws as we level, that stacks really really nicely. In the Underdark, the Grimvorge specifically, make also sure to get the Disintegrating Night Walkers, don't forget them, you get them from the Weirdo. 
these boots will be a nice safety net to make sure annoying terrain will never ever ruin our death slingers day again it is truly amazing and we get missy step with it which gives us access to a teleport in our kit and yeah that's always good to have Equip them and again these fashionable boots will last you for your entire playthrough. And finally another amazing piece that will last you your entire playthrough is found in Act 1 as well. Take your guess. 3, 2, 1. The gloves of uninhibited Kushigo. These were just made for us throwers. It is a no brainer. Extra damage. Juicy. Just make sure to not blow this guy up or you'll have to say bye bye to these gloves. And yeah, that's that would be unfortunate. Okay, as you see, we have now a bunch of gear very early on. Half of them are like best in slot and will last you till the very last boss in the game. And that's also one of the main reasons why I interrupted the leveling here. Because you definitely want to go out of your way to get as much of these gear pieces as fast as possible. Now early game our thrower will just solo carry any team really on honor mode. To prove this I'm showing here some clips where I just skipped all the turns with my entire party except for my death slinger and as you can see it's like one of those group projects in school where one person had to do everything while the rest were doing crack cocaine or just jacking off. You can describe it with one word carry. The Death Slinger is a carry for sure in these early levels and does absolutely ridiculous damage. Just just to look at this damage output, it is out of this world for like a level 4 or 5 build. For example, here, 50 damage with a single throw. That Yeah, that's just nuts. 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 Okay, now that I've proven my point and we went over what to get early on, we get 3 levels right away in Rogue for level 6 to 8. There are no choices here to be made, it's very linear, but at level 6 we get sneak attacks and at level 7 we get cunning actions, so things like dash, disengage and hide on a bonus action, which can definitely be situationally useful when you want to, for example, escape, but your action economy is in a non-optimal position. The real reason why we spec into Rogue, however, is at level 8, like described earlier, for the amazing abilities to make our hands fast. Yes. And by now you know exactly what having fast hands means. At level 9 we can get our Eldritch Knight level. However, this level corresponds with a good point in your playthrough where wielding two weapons is going to be really nice as well. But more on that when we get to mid to late game here. So instead we grab another level on Rogue here and get that dual wielder feat first to set that up. Now at level 10 till 12 we then get our 3 levels in fighter to unlock the Eldritch Knight and level 10 is going to be linear, get defense for some extra defense and then second wind is a nice bonus for if there is ever a situation where things seem to go south and you need some healing. Wait, what am I saying? That will rarely be the case. <laughs> level 11 then is action search time where we get the possibility to get double our actions once every short rest. Really good for when we want to be at our best to get in as much damage as possible within a single turn. Then at 12, it's Eldritch Knight time. We can now bind any weapon that we want to use for throwing, which is great because it doesn't confine us anymore to the few weapons in the game that have that property. So it opens up a lot of options actually. And then specking into Eldritch Knight also gives us some useful spells. You don't want to go for damage here though, just purely utility and defense as Eldritch Knight uses intelligence as its spell casting modifier and we completely dumped that ability like it's worth nothing so obviously abort for cantrips bladeward and friends are both good options friends for advantage with charisma checks and then bladeward for if we ever need it in a sketchy situation where we lost our rage even if the enemy critically hits us with it on they will barely deal any damage so good sustain there to be found Spell Shield is an absolute amazing pick here since we will stack up on a bunch of armor class as well as you will see in a second. But with Shield stacked on top of all of that, as an additional reaction we now have the option to make the enemy miss us even more as it only triggers when the enemy would have otherwise hit you. Very very good pick here. Magic Missiles then for the other spell because it's the only good option out of the remaining options here and it's just guaranteed force damage so we take it. You also get another spell actually to pick but this time on a different page in the leveling interface so it must be extra special right? A lot of good options here actually in this interface as well. You even get an option to get Long Strider. But considering this is level 12 you probably should already have it on a different party member. If not definitely take it. False Scythe is then also a decent pick here actually if you have no source of temporary hit points in your party otherwise like 8. If you do have all those things though then I do like the enhanced leap pick here since it synergizes very well with our high strength. It gives us jump distances that will launch us into Narnia. Very amazing for our mobility actually and it can practically just make you reach any enemy you ever will want to reach basically. And you can cast it preemptively as well without even wasting a spell slot since it is a ritual spell. So let's get back to your late game gear setup then. Now 4 items remain from our early game setup and those will last you for your entire playthrough. The ring stayed the same so 
Ring of Flinging and Caustic Band, the gloves of Uninhibited Kushigo, and our boots. For our other gear slots, however, we can get some juicy stuff now as we have progressed through the game. And starting off with our helm, we go for Saravox Horned Helmet, which gives us nice sustain related perks as well as dark vision, but most importantly, increases our likelihood to critically hit. And to build upon that idea of making us crit as much as possible, we also get the dead shot for our bow. It does the exact same thing. And if you remember, we went for a dual wielder setup through our feet at level 9, which is really good for this build as it means in our main hand we can use our weapon of choice to throw, but in our offhand we can use a very useful stat stick that gives us a bunch of bonuses like Rhapsody, which is absolutely amazing. It stacks with our crits as well in the sense that it gives us a boost to our attack rolls up to plus 3 and not just that but also extra damage and you do stack it very quickly with this build. With our helm, bow and offhand weapon we will crit then so much it's going to be juicy and flavorful and tasty and every superlative in the dictionary. Since we get dual wielder at level 9 that might mean you haven't entered act 3 yet so in that case I would use the knife of the under mountain king which also has the same crit increase effect like our bow and helm and additionally it also rerolls once and two so it increases your damage output in that sense as well. It's a great alternative till you get Rhapsody which is going to be your best in slot for the remainder of the game. Then for our weapon, we get the Lightning Jabber. We can replace the Returning Pike with this beautiful weapon. I really like this throwing weapon for the mid and end game, and you get it relatively early on in Act 2 as well. It has great piercing damage that scales with our strength, and it has lightning damage on top of that as an extra. And you exactly know how good lightning damage is in this game with giving Create Water to, say, your controller. You can make huge areas of enemies wet with just one cast, and wetness doubles all your lightning damage. So when we throw our Lightning Jabber accordingly up to like 6 times a turn, that is dozens and dozens of extra damage that way. Really good synergy. And then the Lightning Jabber also has the potential to deny reactions as well, which can be handy versus, say, annoying enemies that have spells like Counterspell, trying to negate your caster spells, but you in turn prevent them from doing that. Now, because Lightning Jabber is piercing damage, it also synergizes with the Ballist Armor very well, so if you have a melee striker <coughs> that has that piece, then you can benefit from this and literally one-shot a bunch of enemies as well. More on that in a different video, though. Like I also said before, before, our throws can inflict prone, which is really useful from a CC perspective. Enemies that are prone can't do anything basically, have to waste their movement to get up, and our melee strikers get advantage on them. This in itself also gives you and your entire party a lot of momentum just through our enraged throws, even if we're not killing our enemies. One final thing to note is that the lightning jabber doesn't automatically return. So until you have the Eldritch Knight levels to use weapon bond, you can just get a level 3 Eldritch Knight hireling and just let him or her bond the weapon to you for every long rest till you become a big boy and can do it all yourself and with that we have covered everything there is to leveling now all footage in the video was done with 18 strength only to show you the power of the build with the least resources possible but you can easily get your strength to 21 or 27 in act 1 and act 3 respectively thanks to the infinitely obtainable elixirs of those acts, or naturally increase to at least 22 with the mirror of loss and the potion that you get in act 2 so you can even make everything more powerful as well through that way if you wish just saying keep it in mind for our final pieces we go full sustain and defense to give us some amazing survivability we get the cloak of protection for the armor class and saving throws armor of agility for the high armor class as well as adding all of our dexterities modifier to our armor class and extra saving throws as well the fey semblance amulet for the advantage for saving throws for all of our lowest abilities to compensate so wisdom charisma and intelligence at the same time really good then thanks to frenzy we also get advantage on our strength saving throws so all of that combined with our saving throws from our chest and cloak bonuses and high dexterity results into this we rarely ever get annoying or powerful spells or effects applied on us we succeed all saving throws pretty much and this is actual insane value especially on a ranged DPS that you want to let attack as much as possible. Combine that with the fact that our armor class is high as well, so the enemy misses a lot of attacks, which again gives amazing sustain. It's unironically just miss after miss after miss, pretty much. And when combined with our shield spell, it's even more misses. Frenzy from our Barbarian then gives us also that resistance to physical damage, which a lot of people seem to forget about. So even if the enemy manages to hit us with our high armor class, it's still halved for the most common damage types in the game. So all around the board, our build isn't just great from an offensive perspective. No, I made sure it's amazing from a defensive perspective as well making this way i've built my thrower the absolute best way to build a thrower barn on in my very humble opinion 
On a serious note, I do think you get the idea by now. It just checks all the boxes and does the job of being a horrific major damage dealing striker with insane defense. Absolutely amazing. Just like it's your job now to give the video a like, subscribe and consider becoming a patron if you want to support the channel and also have written guides over there for all my builds. So check that out if that's something you like the idea of and enjoy the build whether you want to use it as your entry build for honor mode or just to go on an unstoppable rampage. You will have a great time either way.